The road to Diamond and Champ can be a long one. Hopefully, I can help make that journey just a little bit easier with these five tips that we're going to be talking about today. I'll be trying to give an informative look and demonstration on each of these, but if you want a full deep dive into any particular topic, then be sure to check out the description below for supplement videos. Getting started with far post rotations, Musty calls this the best tip in Rocket League. And if you're not familiar with far post rotations, essentially it just means whenever you're rotating back after a play on the ball, whether it's a pass or something, you want to be rotating towards the furthest post from the ball, as opposed to this path being a near post rotation. A lot of times you might be tempted to go near post so that you can stay close to the ball but you run the risk of messing up your teammate and just hurting your team defensively. Far post rotations has a lot of benefits, starting with your positioning. Going far post when your teammate is going into the play will ensure your next play starts with your car facing the ball. Going far post also means you generally far enough from your teammates during your rotation that you never have to worry about bumping them, unlike in the example shown now where the player rotating out is going near post. By going far post, you also never have to worry about taking your team's boost. If you're rotating out far post on the opposite side of the field, any boost you might want to go for shouldn't affect any boost that your teammate wants to pick up. And finally, consistently going far post just makes you a better teammate by improving your nonverbal communication. Taking another look at that same clip, moments like these are when near post rotations can get you in trouble. This player right now has no idea if his teammate is rotating near post to make another play at the ball or simply rotating back. Consistently going far post can help immensely with your team's decision making and reducing hesitation across the board, so that if you do go near post, your team knows clearly that you're cutting rotation and attempting another play at the ball. Rotations come down to two parts, positioning and padding, and far post rotations will help you immensely in improving your padding. Looking at all the benefits that come with far post rotation, it probably is the best tip in Rocket League. Before we move on to tip number two, I was looking at the stats and 99% of the people watching this are not subbed. If you're enjoying the content, I just wanted to ask that you please consider subscribing and liking the video. It means a lot to me and would be amazing if we could eventually hit 1k subs. But if you're already subbed, you're awesome and let's move on to spacing and pressure. Two of the most common mistakes people make are generally if they don't give their teammates enough space or to give their opponents way too much room to make whatever play they want. When in reality, you want to spread out from your teammate to cover areas in the field that they can't, especially if they're trying to make a play on the ball, and stay close to your opponents to put pressure on them and possibly bait out silly mistakes. I understand that a lot of people stay close to their teammates, especially if they're worried their teammate is going to make a mistake, but the reality is being close to them in those situations won't help you out at all. More than likely, if your teammate is not playing well, they're going to get challenged and lose the ball. And in those moments, the ball is just going to boom over both of y'all. Whereas if you keep your distance and spread out, you're providing support to your teammate by covering areas and possibilities they can't while they're on the ball. Moving on to pressure. When talking about pressure, pressure doesn't always mean making a play. Sometimes simply staying close and having a presence can force out a mistake, like baiting out a bad clear that passes the ball back to your team. And staying close will allow you to challenge at lower speeds, which opens up your turn angles and options. Whereas if you go really far back and then decide later to hurry back into the play, that might already be too late because now you're rushing back in and it's too obvious and easy to flick over. Or you've simply given them too much room and allowed them a chance to shoot something difficult to save. So try to stay close to your enemies and limit their options. Now the real question is, what if I need boost? Getting us to tip number three, boost management. This is probably one of the main reasons you give your opponents too much space because you're going back for the big boost. Good boost management comes from both good pathing and usage. So let's talk about pathing first. Say you need to go from point A to point B almost like a connect the dots drawing. Connect the pennies to where you need to be and you should be good on boost. Four to six pennies should be enough for you to do whatever you want. A lot of times going 100 boost can put you way out of position and grabbing pennies is a great way to improve your field presence. 
since at any time, you can still turn on the ball. But if you're going for a big boost, you are committed to grabbing that boost before you can turn or make any sort of play. Having good boost usage is pretty simple. Just don't use boost when you don't have to. Use it when you need to fly or use it when you need to beat someone to the ball. But don't use boost just to drive around on the field when you're rotating and not the active player on the ball. The fourth thing we're going to be talking about today is defensive strategy and positioning. I've always found it kind of interesting that even at a pretty low rank, we all kind of knew what to do when it came to offense. When our teammate is pushing it up the corner, get middle in case the pass works and just shoot the ball, right? But why is it that when it came to defense, well into diamond and champ, we still see these things happening? And I think it comes down to a lack of understanding a go-to strategy. So similarly to how on offense we have a passer and a shooter, on defense we have a defender and a challenger. The defender would generally be far post facing the ball, while the challenger will be coming out of the near post going towards the ball. The reason you want to get into this sort of formation is so that your challenger can go put pressure on the ball safely, so that if you get to clear then you guys are good to go, but even if he loses or they get the ball over him, your defender will then have a free attempt at the ball, giving your original challenger a chance to rotate back far post and becoming the next defender, making your defensive rotation go full circle. In general, the player that is closer to your far post is going to be the player that becomes the challenger, while the player that is further back, even if he's closer to the ball, should simply rotate back to the defender role. This helps us make sure that our angles and touches on the ball are meaningful and we don't end up doing anything like this. Sometimes if you're first to challenge, you may have to use shadow defense to slow the play down just enough so that your teammate may have enough time to get back to the defender position. Alright everyone, we've made it to the final topic of the day, offensive positioning. Focusing mainly on where you should be as your teammate is preparing for a pass. Assuming your teammate is passing up the left side, let's talk about the following positions. 1, 2, and 3. To quickly go over the pros and cons, position 1 is going to be the most aggressive. If you're at the enemy far post, you're going to be able to capitalize on most successful passes coming your way. While at position 3, you're going to be coming up the same side as your teammate, stopping roughly midfield, preparing yourself to recenter the ball. And finally, we have position 2, the jack of all trades, and personally my favorite, your scoring is limited to punishing major mistakes, and sometimes you have to resort to shadow defense instead of directly challenging certain clears, but you can do a little bit of everything. Now, on to the most important part of this section. Which position should you use? And for that, I'm going to be referencing all the previous tips. Positions 2 and 1 being the more aggressive positions, you should go for one of those. If you notice the enemies are doing a near post rotation, they're giving your teammate too much space, grabbing a big boost at the wrong time, or you simply notice that their defensive positioning is off. Because if they're failing to do those other things, then you have a higher chance of having a successful pass, so you should be ready for the pass. Alternatively, if you notice they're not making any mistakes defensively and carrying out all the previous tips just fine, then prepare yourself at position number 3 to quickly recenter any clears that they make. This is not to say that position number 3 can't score, it's just less likely to receive a scorable pass. Understanding the different positions and when to use them is going to help improve your chances of scoring and making safer plays. If you made it this far, thank you so much for watching. Those are my top 5 tips for hitting diamond and champ. If you found this helpful and want to see more, please leave a comment down below on what else you'd like to see. And of course, any likes and subs are always greatly appreciated. And again, there will be links in the description below, so be sure to check them out. I'll catch y'all next time.